Hello everyone, it's great to have you here today. I'm Mahashri, Marketing Analyst at Zoho Analytics, and I'm joining you from Chennai. 2022 has been an eventful year so far on the Zoho Analytics front, and we've brought in another layer of enhancements to improve your analytics experience. Among these updates are some of this year's most sought after features, and they're already helping our customers with their analytical needs. So let's gear up folks to check out what's new in Zoho Analytics in the first half of 2022. So here's the agenda for today. Firstly, we have the category of updates. So this category of updates would give you a bird's eye view of all the various improvements and developments that we've brought across different analytical functionalities. It would be followed by a detailed explanation of all the key updates that we've got for you today. And then we'd be moving on to the summary where we'd give you a quick recap of all the points covered in the session. And before concluding the webinar, we'd have an interactive Q&A. So without further ado, let's get started by looking at the category of updates. So as you can see, we've taken a well-rounded approach this year and have committed to delivering updates across various analytics focus areas. So right from data import and preparation through visual analytics and all the way to collaboration, we've got updates for you. And we've also got you covered on the UI, UX, and admin fronts. So we'll be diving deep into each of these categories and exploring all the key updates. But before that, for the sake of those that are new to Zoho Analytics, let me just quickly tell you about who we are and what we do. Zoho Analytics is a self-service BI and analytics platform. We started out in the year 2009 and are among the pioneers in the self-service BI space. Today, Zoho Analytics enjoys the loyalty of 14,000 plus customers and over 2 million users across 150 different countries. The platform enables you to seamlessly import and blend your data from over 250 data sources. So this can be files, feeds, local or cloud databases, and also popular business apps. So once you have your data inside Zoho Analytics, you can start visually analyzing it. So you can make use of the plethora of pre-built reports and dashboards we offer you to jumpstart your analytics. And you can also create custom reports by making use of the drag and drop interface and also the ML powered AI assistant. We offer over 50 different visualizations for your data in forms of different charts like the area chart, trend lines, heat maps, and so on. Over and above that, we also facilitate effective collaboration through our data storytelling capabilities. Zoho Analytics is tightly integrated with Zoho Show, which enables you to live stream your reports and dashboards in the form of slideshows. You can also choose to opt for the purpose-built analytics portals that allow you to publish your reports and dashboards as a microsite and share it among your stakeholders. So moving on, let's check out what's new in data import. As I've already mentioned, Zoho Analytics enables you to import data from a wide range of data sources. And we're constantly looking to add more data sources to this list and make the platform data agnostic. So in that context, we've set up integrations with three new business apps, namely SEMrush, Google Search Console, and Zoho Forms. With this integration, we also provide you with 100 plus connector specific pre built reports and dashboards to help you analyze your key metrics faster. Again, you can choose to customize and create your own reports to suit your specific use cases and also blend data from other applications into Zoho Analytics to be analyzed into a single report, which enables cross functional analytics. You can use our domain trained ML capabilities to better extract data insights. So here you can see that we have a sample pre-built dashboard for the SEMrush connector. Advanced analytics for SEMrush enables you to analyze your search driven marketing data in depth and also empowers marketers with deeper insights into keyword driven content marketing. So in this particular dashboard, 
we've focused on keyword specific metrics like the average cost per click, search volume, and so on. Similarly, you can also analyze other key metrics for SEMrush like backlinks, organic and paid search keyword insights, and others in our other pre-built dashboards. Likewise, we also have reports and dashboards available for our other business app connectors like Google Search Console and Zoho Forms. So we looked at some of the new connectors that we've onboarded into Zoho Analytics this year, but we've also brought enhancements to a couple of our existing connectors. So here are some of the quick updates. The synchronization performance of Zoho CRM has been enhanced as we've extended the limitation for importing default fields from a module in Zoho CRM from 100 to 200. We've also added a range of new modules to QuickBooks, Zoho Finance, and Google Ad Connectors, which enables users with more data and a wider scope for preparing insightful reports from the data. So these are the updates that we have for the business app connectors. And we've also got news for you on the database front. So over the last couple of years, cloud databases have garnered a growing popularity among businesses which is why Zoho Analytics has ensured that we integrate with popular cloud databases like Amazon RDS, Amazon Redshift, Microsoft SQL Azure, and so on. So adding to that list, Zoho Analytics now supports importing data from cloud databases like Greenplum, Vertica, Single Store, and MongoDB. Local databases, on the other hand, have not lost their luster and are still used in many sectors. So to facilitate seamless integration with local databases, we've now onboarded two new local databases, namely H2 and Qubrid. Moving on, Zoho Analytics also enables SSH tunneling now. This is enabled to establish a more secure network connection for both your local and cloud databases. And you can see we've highlighted it in the screenshot given over here. Another interesting update is that the platform now supports importing keyhole markup language files as spatial data files for creating geo visualizations. So you can check out the spatial file feature given in the screenshot over here. So with that, we've wrapped up all the updates we have for our data import functionalities. So moving on, once you import your data, the next step would be to prepare it for analysis. Zoho Analytics supports inline data preparation powered by Zoho Data Prep, which can also be availed as a standalone solution. So let's check out some quick updates on this front. Data Prep is now supported for data imported from feeds with pagination. This allows you to clean, enrich, and transform your paginated data while importing. And you can see that the feature has been highlighted over here and is provided in your import console. Next, data prep functionalities are also now available for importing data from another Zoho Analytics workspace. And similarly, we have the feature provided over here. So with that, we sum up the updates for data import and preparation. Moving on to the next phase, visual analytics. So visualization is a powerful way of presenting data insights in an easily understandable and digestible form. Let's check out what new updates we have under the Visual Analytics wings. So to start off, we have a couple of ASEA updates here. Last year, we introduced the embedding of ASEA. And this year, the update we've got for you is that you can now embed ASEA as a private link. This is to ensure that you use ZIA securely in your own environment and in your own terms. All you have to do is copy and paste this iframe code where you need to embed ASEA, and you can get started. Secondly, ASEA has now become more intuitive and automatically suggests follow-up questions based on your initial questions while you interact with the interface. So this allows you to gain faster data insights. Moving on. Another update is that you can now create both aggregate formulas as well as custom formulas in workspaces where you've set up Live Connect to cloud databases. This is largely to simplify your computations. 
Moving on, we've simplified the process of reconfiguring data sources in copied workspaces. So with this new update, you can now copy the relevant data sources connectivity settings along with copying a workspace for essential connectors. This reduces the efforts taken to reconfigure the data source again in a new workspace, and you can easily import data from the same source after simply authenticating it. Finally, under the Visual Analytics wing, you can now export the blueprint of views in one workspace to another workspace. So this reduces the effort and time involved in recreating similar reports across different departments or business units. You can easily export the views and import new data into the same model and get started. So with that, we've covered the Visual Analytics wing. Coming up next, let's look at a couple of updates under collaboration. So as you can see, we've chosen to apply the default user filter while exporting tabular views, which enables you to gain fine-grained access controls into what data you share among different users. So again, another update on tabular views. You can also add a row number column to your tabular views while exporting them. This feature over here will auto-generate sequential numbers for all the exported rows, improving the readability of the view. That's about it for collaboration, folks. Let's move on to check what we have under the UI category. Our team is constantly working on making the UI better for you. And today, we've come to you with four main updates. So number one, from now on, while saving a view, which could be a report, dashboard, or table, you can choose to create a new folder or select the last accessed folder to save the view in. So this is for easily organizing your files. And secondly, you can choose to open the underlying data pop-up in a new tab now. Previously, the underlying data was opened in the same tab as the report. So this update improves the readability of data and also gives you room to compare the report against the underlying data. Coming to the third update, previously, when you would refresh your browser while having many views open, only the last open view was restored. But now, we've enabled the restoration of all the views upon browser refresh. Lastly, the Workspace Settings page now provides the shared details for all your users and views. So as you can see, we have in the screenshot all the dashboards that I've shared and all the users that I've shared the dashboards with. So this ensures better clarity in terms of viewing where my dashboards have been uh, shared. So moving on, under the UX category, We've brought in a couple of dependency detail enhancements that would make working around with views much easier. So let's just check them out. So these updates enhance the product's usability. And what they are is that when you click on dependency details of your views, you can now check out the various dashboards the view has been used in. This is in addition to the tables which were initially visible when you clicked on dependency details. Secondly, Dependency details for tables now also contain details of their immediate child tables. And the query table dependency details now include multiple level parent tables and child tables. Lastly, these details can now be invoked from the Explorer or model diagram. So let's just quickly see how this is done. So as you can see, when I click on dependency details, I'm able to view the child tables. And under that, child views and also the dashboards that we've used the data in. And also, you can see that this has been invoked through the Explorer. So moving on, so the report designer now supports undo and redo actions as a user experience enhancements. All of us are bound to make mistakes. And with this enhancement, we can easily undo our actions and get started with a faster report creation. So here are the undo and redo features given. Coming up next, we'd like to let you know that we've revamped our query table editor. So from now on, you can access tables and columns as well as SQL functions on the right-hand side panel while creating a query table. So this update is brought in to provide you with 
easier accessibility and improve your user experience. Finally, we'll be wrapping up the session with a couple of important admin-related updates. So an interesting news is that we've introduced a 15-day trial for the analytics portal for all our premium users. So this is a purpose-built portal that allows you to share your reports and dashboards as a microsite among your teams. And this provides easy and focused access to your data insights for the users you share it with. So you can check out the sample portal that we have over here. So as you can see, I've embedded a dashboard in the portal along with some content. And we've also got separate tabs that I can switch moving on. Next, we have some updates on white labeling. So white label users can now do the domain mapping and domain verification from Zoho Analytics user, face, user interface itself. So this allows them to configure the white label solution in a secured and user-friendly manner. Secondly, the white label solution now also supports a single sign-on method through the JWT algorithm that securely authenticates your details and also provides a hassle-free sign-on process for you. So next, we've got in store a couple of data sync updates. The enterprise plan now supports data sync from business applications every one hour. And you can also choose the modules and fields that you want to sync. So in case of any sync failures, you will also get notified via email or through our in-app notifications. As a third update, you can now view your data synced history for all your business app connectors to keep track of when your data is being updated. The sync history of the last 45 days will be available in a calendar that is color coded to highlight the sync successes and failures. So you can just hover over the calendar to view the number of times the data has gotten synced on a given specific date. Zoho Analytics now allows you to email views from your organization email addresses. So this is in addition to the default notifications at zohoanalytics.com email address. Another important update on the organization email address is that you can also send alert mails to your users from an organization email address, adding a touch of personalization. That's about it for the main updates, folks, but we're not quite done yet. We do have some important information to share with you before we move on to the summary. So we've focused on a couple of mobile app enhancements this time, and we've introduced two new chart types, namely the bubble pie chart and also the word cloud. In other news, Zia Insights is now available on the mobile app as well for you to use. Finally, We'd like to let you know that Zoho Analytics is now HIPAA compliant. Data security and privacy is a governing principle of Zoho Analytics, and we're happy to let you know that we've reached this milestone. So you can, uh, through HIPAA compliance, uh, you'd be able to protect the privacy, security, and integrity of health information. And it also provides standards for individuals' rights to understand how their health information is being handled or used. So with that, we'll be moving on to the summary. So we looked at various updates today on different fronts of Zoho Analytics. Let's just have a quick recap of the session in less than a minute before we move on to the Q&A. So we had various different categories today. So under data import, we checked out the new business app connectors onboarded this year and also ex uh, enhancements brought to existing connectors. There was the onboarding of new databases, and also the keyhole markup language, which is now supported in Zoho Analytics. Under data preparation, we saw that data prep is now supported for paginated import and for import from other analytics workspaces. Under the visual analytics wing, we checked out a couple of ASIA updates. We saw that custom formulas and aggregate formulas can be um, are now supported for cloud databases with Live Connect. We checked out the data source update for Copy Workspace and also the view blueprints. Under collaboration, we had a couple of updates on exporting tabular views, like adding default filters or the automatic addition of row numbers. On the UI front, we checked out how you can now simplify 
uh, the way you save your reports and dashboards, and also how you can check out your underlying data for each report. We looked at how views are restored after refresh, and also where you can find your shared details from settings. For UX, we checked out a couple of dependency detail enhancements and also the undo or redo actions that are now supported. Under admin, we looked at a couple of white labeling enhancements and also data sync updates. Before concluding, all the updates with our mobile app enhancements and also information on HIPAA compliance. And thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. You can write to us at support at zohoanalytics.com and visit our website to explore, explore more features at zoho.com slash analytics. Today, we took a glimpse of all the new updates we have in the past six months. So you can also check out our new releases with the given link over here on the slide to get to know more about what's new in Zoho Analytics. So with that, I'll be signing off. Thank you, everyone, once again for joining.